everybody, we are here with the unboxing or discussion roundtable panel, whatever you want to call it, of the latest Game of Thrones chapter pack, The Captain's Command. And let's just jump right into it. Uh, the first card we have is Arbor Guardsman, which as a Lannister player, which this is, I'm very excited about. Three costs, three strength, uh, military power icons with naval on the military, house red wine trait, and response. After you kneel a standing character using a card effect, add two gold to your gold pool from the treasury. Limit <laughs> once per round. Everyone else is like shaking there. <laughs> it's like Lannister didn't need this. Not cool. Um, this is great. This fits into a lot of decks. <laughs> Hyper Neil, uh, even just any deck that has the new the Marjorie. Thing, the thing about this card that really is good to me is King Tommen. It's like, oh, I know King Tommen to draw a card. His effect is a card effect, so you add two gold to your gold pool. That's right. Isn't it a permanent? Well, uh, no, after you kneel a standing character using a card effect. So it's just do, Nailed it. do anything. Right? Like, Nailed it. But, oh, I get a card and but two he, gold. But he's one gold, uh, assuming you marshaled him on whatever turn, and uh, then every subsequent turn he's cranking out another two gold. That's it crazy. It could be later for dominance effects or anything or, like mean, that. I mean, landing tunnels. Yeah. you have shadow cards, getting the gold can be a That's huge right. thing. Yeah, just being able to have gold outside of the marshaling well, and I mean, phase. Well, I mean, Lanny awesome. also has lots of ways to... Like, they have that uh, location where you can move the gold to it and store it up. Yeah. They've also, I mean, you run the plot where you skip taxation for mm -hmm. one turn, and it's like, you just kneel That's a couple insanity. times. That's insanity. You, you, you can only do it <laughs> once. Steven's mind You, you can do it once per round, but yeah, it is pretty That is pretty ludicrous. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. Tommen? Tommen's the... That the, is the, ludicrous. The, you know, all right, we all agree it's ludicrous. Yeah, it's great. I'm solid three cost I character. Can't, I can't believe it's three strength, <clears> honestly. <throat> and with the navel, that's just bananas. Anywho... Moving on. Steven's going to be upset. upset. He's like, that all right, my Raiders suck. That is crazy to think about that. A card and two gold every turn? Uh -huh. Just for kneeling a one-cost character? Yep. Dude, all you have to do is burn Tommen. <sighs> Iron Almond's Brigand. He's a Raider. That's exciting. One cost. <laughs> uh, one strength. One icon with the naval on it. It's a military icon. Uh, but that's not why you play him. Response, discard Iron Almond's Brigand from play to cancel the effects of a location card just triggered. Um... Interesting. I, I would say it fits into a something we haven't really seen yet, which is a controlly kind of raider build. Uh, between this guy and newly made lord and a few other things like Captain the Iron Fleet, you can actually control locations pretty easily. Victorian's Reavers as well as a raider who targets locations. So we're seeing this as a theme. I think it's I think it's a good building block of that theme. I don't know that it's ready for prime time. I mean, is a one cost raider in and of itself worth anything? Yeah, I mean, you can play him for more or less free with the oarsmen and kneeling uh, warships, and he does help your Eurons and Forcers, but so far that's about all that we've seen out of the So what you're saying is he's Raiders. not the Lannister card we just saw. He's not the Lannister card we just saw, but I do <coughs> like him, and you know, it just between him and River Blockade and the, that unique warship that cancels a location effect, like, you can lock down locations really well. And you know, the great joy thing is if I can lock down locations and Valor and save my dudes and all yours die, then we're probably okay. And this guy also works really well in a, a choke deck because he can cancel the, the big reducer <coughs> or any other thing that's gonna help you get stuff out. So I, I like him, I like him. Cool, it's a solid. Solid. <laughs> Look at What's that right back. next, Tam? The next card is the Iron Fleet Scout. <clears throat> it's a one cost great joy location. It has a challenges action. Pay one gold to turn Iron Fleet Scout into a character with two strength, a military icon, and a power icon, each with a naval enhancement on it until the end of the phase. It's decent. Pay I one mean, gold, you have a two cost, two strength character you can turn into two challenges. But that, that's the kicker is that the pay one gold mm. out of Greyjoy, I think that is not going to be terribly common or interesting to a Greyjoy player. The moment that it will be terribly common is Ice Fisherman mm -hmm. and Craigorn. Sure. Um, both choke cards that often, because you're going first, leave you with one gold that you have nothing to do with. Um, that happens all the time. So It's something. It, and at the end of the day, it's a warship, right? It's a warship, <coughs> yeah. Um, it it may be, you know, it's cool because it doesn't get hit by Valor, uh, and then you can, you know, swing in big on that turn, potentially. Uh, it, it's a good, like I said, it's a good card. It feels like another one that's kind of a building block of something greater than what is out now. I feel like it's one of those cards too that is an opponent I could easily forget. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm like, oh, I can win this challenge. And then it's like, oh my god, I can't win this challenge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, I think he, I think he's pretty solid. He, he has some, and I, I like the card that turns all warships into characters as well that we do not sow. So 
maybe in the future we'll see a greater deck that doesn't actually run any characters. It's just terrifying. four ships. It's just a bunch of ships. Just yep. a bunch of ships. Awesome. <coughs> Solid card. Next up, we have the Lyseni <coughs> Pirate. Two cost Baratheon character, two strength, military with a naval enhancement. He's a smuggler, which is a big deal, I think. Mm -hmm. After you win a challenge in which he was declared as a naval attacker or defender, it claimed a power. Seems right up that alley, right? Sounds like for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we already saw what Greg just won with uh, Barrow Black Seals. I wish he had another icon on that guy, um, but... I think he's solid. If, if you're going Black Seals, it's, it's just a great character to throw in. It yeah. really is. Just so, another naval. Solid card, not game-changing, but I'd play it. It's pretty good. If I play Baratheon. <laughs> Alright, uh, next up we have Karain Sathmantes, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. A unique three cost, two strength character with a military and intrigue icon with naval on the intrigue. Smuggler and captain traded. Reading, smuggler characters gain stealth. This is the guy. This is what we were waiting for, because Baratheon had all kinds of smugglers that they were accruing uh, previously and then during the cycle, and now... Here's one of those critical elements that'll just make them really, really good. Yeah, it happened. The synergy kind of happened. Mm -hmm. there. It's interesting. It's interesting because they have stealth and they also have a lot of naval enhancements. Yep. So it's like <coughs> between making it where you can't block with certain things and then adding whatever I want in, mm -hmm. they can really put you in a weird spot. Yep. You know what gets around stealth is naval. Stealth. And it has both. It has both. So <laughs> can't the best get around way this to, guy. Best way to fight him is to uh, have naval of your own or just valor. It's like we're having <laughs> sea or make battles. sure that guy dies. Yeah. <clears throat> kill it. Kill it. Targaryen talk. Uh, let's move on to Wyla. Kill people. <laughs> Wyla Manderly or Willa Manderly. Uh, one cost, one strength, power, has the uh, navel on it. And I have a feeling that's not why we're going to run this card. But uh, Stark, right? Yeah, Stark, Lady, and House Manderly. Stalwart. Whoa. I'm get, so excited. Get those Stalwart I wish that decks was my back in. No, you don't. <laughs> I'm just kidding. While she's defending and there's at least one attacking ally or traitor, she gets plus three strength. Um, this is not game changing. That's not fantastic, but you know another stalwart character to throw into the Stark stalwart, stalwart deck. Mm -hmm. uh, and she what, has green hair. What can she get with stalwart? <laughs> like stealth and deadly and plus one and plus uh, yeah. No one's no one's really done it to yeah. know. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> people have done it, but then they stop doing it. Then we don't hear about those decks. <laughs> right there. Turns out it was just okay. Uh, you know, it's still stalwart. I don't think she's good enough to to really say much about it yet. It's. I agree. Yeah, she's just. A, <laughs> Lady. <clears throat> uh, up next, we have the White Harbor. It's a stark, unique, two cost location, the North, so it can Sounds be blanked like by Mance. It huh? can be blanked by Mance. <clears throat> uh, it has a challenge action. Neil White Harbor to choose a character controlled by an opponent with six or more power on his or her house. Until the end of the phase, that character cannot be saved and ignores any effect that would make it cannot be killed. Hello, Power of Blood. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, great anti Power of Blood. <clears throat> I, I mean, it's that. also great anti Barrett. Yeah. Well, you eh. won't ever have six power on his house. That's true, yeah. Uh, First idea. I'm glad Lannister has infamy. So, what, this is a two cost <laughs> location that you play whenever there's a really bad threat in your mid game and you need to valor it out of the game, basically. Mm -hmm. To me. Eh. Uh, this is a challenges action. Yes. Oh, gosh. We're talking about Stark, though. You run this in Stark Siege and they can't yeah. save? Maybe a, a heavy murder deck. Or murder. Yeah. yeah, it's just that by the sword, it's... Yeah. I think it's pretty kills. good. I think it's solid. I really do. You might throw one copy in. It, definitely not. Well, it's three. unique. You're not, yeah. you're not <laughs> loading up on this guy. I don't know. Paying two for that, though? I think it's well costed, I think, actually. I think it's really, really good in a murder deck, now that yeah. I think about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many kill effects that are direct. Yeah, there's a lot of kill effects, and well costed. Just, it's... There's that a lot of things no quarter. that people are reliant on to when try to prevent them from losing one of their clutch characters and if you can circumvent that and then do a targeted kill in some form or fashion on top of that it's really nice i guess my ultimate problem is that you have to have six power in your house mm -hmm. more more is it more than six or just six? six or more six or more and you know the the decks that come out that are really bad for that are all revolving on renown and power on characters and cersei attacking over and over and little finger and all that and they might have you know four or five power in their house in the first turn, but they might be at thirteen power, mm -hmm. or you know twelve power or ten. So you're not gonna. It's not gonna help against those threats. I guess is my ultimate concern with it. Yeah, it's not gonna help for rush. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it'll. I don't know. I think mm -hmm. in the right deck it could be used. Yes. I, I don't think it's like mere read where every Stark deck is gonna run it, but mm -hmm. it's, it's decent. All right. Next up we have a plot. House Stark only. It's a four three one. Manderly scheme. 
During intrigue challenges against you, your characters with a military icon gain an intrigue icon. <laughs> I love it. I, no, don't I agree with Steven. It. Don't say Steven. you love this plot. I've heard it out of a few Stark players now. It's not no, as good as Stark players no. seem to think it is. <laughs> How can you love this I, plot? I don't think it's as good as Sean thinks it is. <clears throat> yeah. Sean, but I don't think it's as bad as you guys think it is. Sean Clemens of Lemons the thinks that this card is ultimately awesome. does nothing. I mean, think about the plots that you have in the game that have a serious impact on everything. And this is a one-time shot to maybe deflect an intrigue challenge if they don't have stealth or deadly or something that like matters. And it's, and it's not like Stark is hurting on intrigue this anyway. Is, this has been established. It destroys power behind the throne, huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> huh? For one turn, huh? maybe. And I think even they have the intrigue presence to overcome. Like, if you're gonna <laughs> oh, spend, oh, oh! You just defended. Oh, misinformation. What else? <laughs> or deadly? Like I said, deadly stealth. Yeah. Like well, we got plenty of deadly, this. and we got plenty of stealth. It's like, why are you going to spend a turn? Now, if it also said, if you win an injury challenge on the defense, X, Y, or Z, like, mm -hmm. maybe give me something that's going to change the game. If it was two claim, sure. if it was 20 initiative, like, if there was a reason <laughs> to run this plot other than... It is four gold. It's not bad. I mean, I mean why are you going to... Easy, maybe a better question. Why are you going to run this over loyalty? Uh, my loyalty uh, negates an injury challenge in the same way, like... I know there are exceptions, but it does a better job of everything else as well, and it gives you the same stat line. My, my ultimate thing is that Stark is an offensive house, and this feels like a defensive plot with a low initiative. And well, I think that Stark has a icons. very good defensive deck if they want to build it. Oh, sure. It, like, they do. A really, really good And I was building deck. into that, but I think that <clears> this is like a very niche deck, and it's not the kind of decks that most people are assume that it's going to fall into place with like a, a Siege of Winterfell deck or mm -hmm. anything like that. No. The games where that plot is useless is absurdly high. <laughs> Really? You're playing against Greyjoy or something? Like, okay. Cool. <laughs> cool story. Though. I don't like it. I, I think that's a horrible plot. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a fan. Just saying. What Ooh. do you think? <laughs> Final I think it's better than you're saying, but worse than Sean thinks. <laughs> oh. Medium plus. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle. Okay. Medium plus. Next up, we have the best named card in the history of Game <laughs> of Thrones. Flanky Town Orphan. One cost, one strength, one icon intrigue. Uh, Martell Ally responds after you play Flanky Town Orphan. <laughs> That's so fun. Uh, from your hand, reveal the top card of your deck. Play that card as your next action this phase. Otherwise, return it to the top of your deck. Poor Man's Val in Martell. Yeah. The nice thing is that if you can't play it, it just goes back to the yeah, top of your deck. You don't have to discard it, yeah. which means you don't need the Laughing Storm. Which is but nice. if you play it and it's like, ah, that's a Red Viper, I think <laughs> yeah. I'll play that card. This is the kind of card I look at and I'm like, you know, what's the big deal? And then, like, every Martell deck has it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I guess it was way better than I thought. But, yeah, it's okay, right? I, it's decent. Does it get a slot, though, in a Martell deck? That's so competitive. Yeah. Like, I have a hard time seeing it. I don't I don't think it's that impressive. I mean, if you want a weenie for fodder or something like that, but the overall stats on this guy are pretty dismal. I mean, it is nice to be able to look at the top card. Impressive. You do know the top card. Well, and that's good for a couple of reasons. Because it's like, you have the option to play the card that comes up. So if it's a character that you'd rather play, you can play it. And if it's like an event you want, you could maybe play one of the cards that let you reel the top two, draw one, or draw, or whatever. Um, like, it's just options, really. Yeah. It just gives you options. The real reason to run it, that you're all overlooking, is, Here we go, name. is Planky Town yeah, Orphan. Yeah, it's the name. Planky Town Orphan. He's one of... I'll play Pl Planky Town Orphan. <laughs> Planky Town. Play Planky Town. Yeah, it's like, hard to say. You want a nightmare is that Planky Town? Yeah, you <laughs> Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Uh, moving on to another really impressively named card, the Salty Dornishman. <laughs> they they could have gone a lot of ways with that. Second, sounds like, sounds like a wrestling name. move. <laughs> I'll put you in a Salty Dornishman. I got him in a Salty Dornishman. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we need to discuss is a three-cost <clears throat> dude in Martel and three strength with no icons. So uh, I mean, Seems bad. something, something. Red flags are everywhere. But also, do they have ships or not? Like, can we, can we just, can we settle this? I now? mean, they have a lot of coastline. I just don't know why they aren't getting as many. They didn't get the ships. fleet, right? They why have like canoes. <laughs> yeah, but this guy's War not. Canoes. This is a, this is a sailboat. <laughs> this is a dude. This is a salty dorm thing. He's working the seas. There's clouds. Manning the nets, using every part of the fish. Anyway, he's an ally. So again, allies are still. Uh, I feel like ally hate is really going to be cool again. Uh, challenges, kneel one influence to choose one icon until the end of the phase. Salty Dornishman gains that icon with a naval enhancement on it. It's interesting, for sure. You know, this really does screw with the battle math pretty impressively. I mean, you attack in and you have to assume at that point that every challenge is 3 plus strength until they use this ability. So you got to overcommit to well, stuff. They can use it more than once, right? It's cool. 
Well, I mean, but he's, he if he's going to block, then... <laughs> this is a, I, I <laughs> this think is a great joy mechanic that's character. A big deal. Yeah. You can't, yeah. You can't stealth yeah, exactly. around him, yep. and exactly. it's like, I can block anything. Mm -hmm. exactly. So if there's that one challenge that you really need to win, no. Shut it down. Yeah. But yeah, now the Martells are playing card, though. He can't he get stealth. Crazy. He is expensive, though. Yes. Way. But he does have a lot of strength. He's way expensive, actually. But he is an ally. Uh, Not that anybody's running dissension anymore. I don't think this is a guy that you play. <laughs> the, the, que the question comes to, does he get a slot? No. <laughs> Just like well, Plinky Town Orphan. He does get a slot in a Black Sails deck. He would get a slot in like a, in like an Agate draft. Like this guy, <laughs> but that's, does, that's does why he's costed like that. Does naval icons if, for Black Sails? If now? Black Sails didn't exist, yeah. he would be a two cost. Yeah. But because Black Sails exists, he's perfect. You're almost guaranteed to get it. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, oh, what do you not have on the board? I'm going to attack with this dude and add him in. and then you get it, could it. Be, it could be good. That's interesting. All right. Up next, we have Sir Cletus. He's Ron Wood. Cletus? <laughs> <laughs> See that yeah, last name again? You're Ron Wood. You're Ron Wood. Why is Silent Ridley Ron Wood? You're in Wood. Uh, it's a Martell character, three cost, two strength, Lord Knight. He has a military and a power icon. He has melee and renown. Solid. Seems good. Uh, if you are not running a, a non-character agenda, or if you are running a non-character agenda, treat Sir Cletus or Onwood's printed text box as if it were blank. All right, so you want to run a character agenda. With uh, this response, after Cletus or Onwood is killed, draw two cards. It's just another... <laughs> <laughs> Golf club. This might be the first good card I've seen in this pack. <clears throat> no, that's not true. No, the <laughs> Arbor Guardsman. The smuggler dude. And oh, the, the Arbor Guardsman, yeah. <laughs> the one you were just... Shot. Still, the Arbor, the Arbor Guardsman is number one. But this is great. I mean, it goes right into the, the Quentin deck. Martell is the only house getting this kind of thing, which is kind of confusing to me. Especially because their character is actually really good. Mm -hmm. It's very you good. You think you want to incentivize the bad ones. <laughs> yeah, yes. exactly. Uh, but I think we'll see more of this coming up later down the road. It also works in a knight deck, kind of, but mm -hmm. you're probably running the knight's agenda, so he doesn't really do anything. I mean, I think I think he's a one or two in a, a character agenda deck for Martell, honestly. Melee and Renown is big, and then if he dies, you draw two. Like, you don't want to kill bad. him. He's just a good card. Yeah, it's just a really good card. character. All right, up next, we have another Sir, Sir Raleigh Duckfield. <laughs> 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 Three cost. <laughs> unique. Let's put all the funny names in this pack. <laughs> three cost. It should have been the funny name pack. Three cost, unique, Targaryen card, three strength, military power, naval enhancement on the power, knight. He's also a king's guard. Um, while you control a lord or lady character, he cannot be discarded from play. What do you think, Targ play? Blah, blah, blah. It's decent. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll say it like this. <laughs> I recently built a Targ Black Sales deck. After playing Scrag's Black Sails deck, and he did not make it into the Black Sails <laughs> deck. Uh, I mean, I, I like him for the sense that, like, you know, if you're running Westeros Bleeds, he can be cool. Or like, what about a Targ Knights deck? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, he's. I, I wish he had like one keyword. Yeah. Um, being unique in a three cost. Aquatic. Like he's just not bringing enough. <laughs> In my brain, he's he's not bad, and he could make a black sales deck, but I'm I'm not too on that vibe. Cool, semi. That's my thoughts. All right, he does have a cool name. Yeah. Oh, Duck oh, Duckfield. Yeah, everybody yeah. got a good name here. All right, next up we have Blood Magic Ritual, a mm. Shadows card. There we go. S one Targaryen House Targ only, of course. Response: After Blood Magic Ritual comes out of Shadows, choose a non-army character in your dead pile and put it into play. At, attach Blood Magic Ritual to it. If Blood, Ma Blood Magic Ritual leaves play, kill attached character. All right, this is here's great. the deal. Can you bring yeah, talk about without, the jank. with no yeah. attachments? Uh, you got to bring thing. it up, and I'm going to rant about it for a while. I'm, you can rant, but here's here's how it's been officially like ruled. Apparently, um, if you choose a not a character with no attachments to come back in. The attachment cannot attach to it. Therefore, the attachment is never attached. It goes to the discard pile, and the character does not die again because the attachment was never on the guy in the first place. That's dumb. That is very dumb. So, for Targ, it's not an army, so you can't drop an armies armies with no attachments. I don't but care. what you can drop are dragons. Dragons are beast mode at this point. Rago dies. All right, that's cool. I'll bring him back. Even if it did attach, I would be happy to pay three gold to get Daenerys out of my dead pile and put her back into play with this thing attached to it. Which is the idea of the card, right? <clears throat> so the card is designed, this is how we're gonna balance it, it's gonna come out, it's gonna bring something from your dead pile, and then if it gets discarded with attachment hate or some you know, some kind of effect like that, then it's gonna the character's gonna go away. Very thematic, makes sense. Yet, because it is worded incorrectly, it is broken. 
and it doesn't work as what I can only assume the designers intended. Now, unless it was intended to like have this weird thing with no attachments characters, but it's like, come on, like, why why don't the cards well, work like you're, no, you're, you're you want exactly them to right. work? And I yeah. mean, we we're, we've been over this a million times. This happens a lot. Like, <laughs> Quit doing this. Luckily for Targ, it means we have another really good card. Crazy good. Uh, <laughs> Luckily. <laughs> Luckily for Targ, we need more. Here's the good news. Um, but what I, what's interesting, too, even if that was how it worked, um, what happens in a scenario where you've got it on Daenerys, you nightmares the attachment, you then remove the attachment, get it out of play while it's blanked? Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's something like conditional effects and... I don't know. Or, like, could I splash Frozen Solid and attach it to that attachment after well, it's out? it's House Stark only, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe an like alliance gotcha. deck. <laughs> um, well, long story short, so working as intended, this is a, a cool card. It's interesting. I think, you know, if you no, need... No, it's a great card. Well... Yeah, I think it's great. It is, but it's also, you it know, you gotta... Hurts. It's three gold. I would pay three to get a dead Illyrio out mm -hmm. every day of the week. Mm -hmm. It's like I said, it's good. It's really good. No, for that, I think this could be really good in a City of Shadows setting. You better believe it. Like, just throwing that out there. <laughs> this is yeah. Feel free to throw it Coming back to the top of the list yeah. for that kind of a day. Yeah, that's so crazy. that's in immediately. <clears throat> so it's a great card. It's <clears throat> even better because it's. I guess I think poorly executed on the text. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, like I just can't. Like, no. It drives me crazy. You're right. You're, like, you're exactly right. We've been playing right. this game for a yeah. long time, and it's like, if this keeps happening, why? Like, make the words work. Like, a card comes out, and then two seconds later, someone's on the forums. Hey, this doesn't work like this. It's mm -hmm. like, where was that guy in the design process? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> where is that dude <laughs> five months ago? <laughs> um, but may, if it's intended to work with the no attachments guys and make them even better, then I suppose we'll never know. It, it did its job. <laughs> there, I mean, there are very few non-army no attachments. Well, I guess the uh, if you think the about dragons. it, the, during the blood magic ritual, the the dragons essentially came from it, right? Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> that was deep. <laughs> Eventually, <laughs> then, like I mean, that, that's what the, that was the catalyst of all. Maybe that's their intent. Maybe it is intended. If it's intended, then. So be it. And if it wasn't, maybe they'll say it wasn't. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Easy out. <laughs> well, let's move it's on to uh, Guided by Keith. 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 A unique event that's non-deathbound, which is interesting. Because I think every unique event that I've ever seen has been deathbound, right? Mm -hmm. Does anyone else think that? I think that's what about the Battle of Ruby Ford? Is that? That's deathbound. It's unique. Yeah. deathbound. So it's weird. I don't know if that matters. I haven't really thought about it too much. Um, but House Targaryen only put a character or location card from your hand into Shadows as if it had the Shadows Crest. Then attach Guided by Kaith to it. Cast a condition attachment with the text. Pay the printed gold cost of the attached card to put it into play as your Shadows action. If Guided by Kaith becomes unattached, return attached card to its owner's hand if it is still in Shadows. I'm sorry you guys can't see this card in front of you because it is very... <laughs> Well, I've next. read it. I know what it is. <clears throat> so basically, you get to put a guy in shadows with it, mm -hmm. attach that to it. If that gets removed, the shadow card bounces back. You basically, if you bring it out of shadows, that's going to go away anyway. So if they can get rid of the attachment while it's in shadows, they're going to put the card back in your hand. I think that it's unique so that you can't have three cards in shadows. Yeah, you can only have, you can only do one at a time. You can only sense. do one at a time. Okay. Um, to me, what I'm thinking, obviously, as Targ player, I've, I've thought about it, but uh, this is actually a great tool for splashing stuff. Um, you know, you, you have three cost characters or something, you play an event, you don't have to pay the gold penalty because it's coming out of shadows, like, it's not playing the card. Um, and it's a really great way, too, maybe I don't have enough gold to play a dragon this turn, or Daenerys, or Lyrio, or any character I really want, and I can kind of, like, reserve them for the next round. Does this get a slot? I mean, this is a weird, weird I think it card. depends on the deck. It really It'd does. have to be really shadows, like... This is the kind of card that I feel like one day the deck comes along that we all go, oh my gosh. That's what card? it was for. Yeah. You may tell you where the magic is. Yes. <laughs> this is an any phase action. Yeah. So, I marshal, I save three gold, I say go ahead. Then you're like, okay, you do your thing. Now what it lets me do is after you've marshaled, I can potentially put a character in the shadows based on what you've played. Maybe I don't want to put Illyrio out because you might play military icons and have claim and kill him. But now I can safely decide what to put out, what icons I want. As an any phase action, I think that could 
there's interesting interactions when you can put a character into shadows in weird places. You can also save something from like intrigue claim to you, right? Like, Absolutely. Oh, I just lost an intrigue challenge. I guess. Or I you know, you do have a character that lets you draw in the middle of a phase, and you have someone you really don't want to lose. You drop them into shadows. I'm picturing, you know, I have a dragon pit out, threat from the north, and then I can drop someone in that I couldn't. Hmm. That doesn't have the shadows icon. Like there are lots of reasons I think that it's interesting. At least. Nice. At the yeah. very least, this is an interesting. Yeah, card. yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting <clears throat> card. Cool. Well, we'll uh, continue with that. <clears throat> All right, next up, we have Dagger Lake Galley. Money. It's a neutral one-cost location with a worship trait. It has an any-phase action. Neil Dagger Lake Galley to choose a unique character you control. That character gains a naval enhancement on the icon of your choice until the end of the phase. It's money in a Black Sails deck. Yep. <clears throat> this this is the card that Black Sails needed from the very first pack. Really? I mean, it's just a way to almost Does always it? guarantee that you have an a full icon mm -hmm. to get your agenda it's true. greased and flowing. Are you now? You said you're building a black cells deck. Do you? Whenever I, I mean, I was toying around with like non black cells decks, and it was like I couldn't keep a naval enhancement off my side of the board. So, are, are you really struggling with like finding enough naval enhancement characters? Um, the the big deal is to trigger it. You have to have two characters out. Like you have to naval someone in. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times, you know, you'll be, <clears throat> it's interesting. Like, yeah, yeah, you just need as much as possible. Yeah, and, and it's, to me, it's just a backup. It, if you don't happen, to, if you draw this and not the characters, or you search a location out with the black sails, mm -hmm. this pretty much guarantees you'll be black sailing for the rest of the game. I feel like this pumps black up. Black sailing. <laughs> I think this pumps up the Greyjoy black sails a bit too, just because this is a warship. So it, you know, you can use it for naval escort if you don't need the the thing, and there's a few other synergies with the warship. Sure. So well, I think a another thing to add is it's any phase. So on the epic battle where the naval enhanced characters can block and attack while nice. melt. Um, I mean, being able to give a character with renown the ability to block in in that phase or with some triggered ability. Um, but yeah, I mean, giving renown to or giving naval enhancement to a renowned character is huge. It's like, oh, normally you just stealth past him. It's like, no, he's going to be naval. I'm going to jump him in. I think you just touched on the biggest power. point, which outside of Black Sails, outside of anything, let's say your deck doesn't have very much stealth. Yeah. This lets you get characters in the challenge that you otherwise don't want to be stealth, um, that have you know triggered abilities or need to block to do certain things or, or whatnot. But it definitely is a stealth blocker. Absolutely. Is that any unique character? Yeah, any unique character. Yeah, that's pretty interesting for it's the big good. guys like like old Don Darian. It's a good card. It could get interesting. Yeah, absolutely yeah. A good card. All right, next up we have Anointed by the Mother. Um, it is a prayer card, which this the is the first a, of. This is a, a new series of, of cards. It's basically events that are called prayers. Um, any house except Lannister. Sorry, Robert. No. Uh, response, kneel to influence or kneel a holy character to cancel a triggered effect that would cause a player to draw one or more cards. Instead, you draw the number of cards. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. I'm not a fan. Um, really? The, the tough part for me with this is that you're canceling a card draw, um, which a lot of times is one card. So you, spend, time, yeah. you spend a card and to influence to cancel them getting a card and you get a different card instead. Like, the math isn't really there for me. If, if consistency was like three cards, like that's what people normally drew with that something like that, the math works a little better for me. It's like, I'm gonna stop you from getting three, I get three, that's worth an event in my deck. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'd rather just kill something. <laughs> well, you're thinking about it like a target player. What about me with a one cost Greyjoy Holy Weenie that's gonna just kneel to cancel that? It's like, well, it's not worth an event. Pyromancer's cash comes in. No, no, it's not. That's my point. It's like it's, it's a, you're using a card to cancel. Yeah, there, and there's there's one card that makes it worth it, and that's Pyromancer's cash, or you know, if somebody's doing like a vampire agenda, heaven forbid. Um, but most of them, as pointed out, it's it's one card, and even the Lannister players, by and large, these days, I've seen are dropping Pyromancer's cash and going with Widow's Whale, which if they're smart, they're using one card draw at a time like that, even. So I agree. I think you have the right assessment of that. It's a little bit too costly for um, the little hurt and then the little gain you get back uh, for your opponent or for yourself. Yeah, I, I just don't. In most cases, I don't think it's worth a slot. There may be decks or there may be things that make it worth it, but for me, I just yeah. don't see it. Yeah, I think you're right. I'm seeing it. All right. Next up, then, uh, judged by the father. Also a prayer. Any house except Targaryen. Sorry, Zach. What? Uh, turnabout's fair play. Any phase, kneel to influence or kneel a holy character to choose a character with three strength or less in your dead pile and return it to your hand. What? This is fantastic. 
no it's argument about the, yeah, yeah. It opens it up. This one is muy excelente. I love it. We we're seeing, I think, and cards like this herald this in, is we're seeing a, a pretty dramatic, I think, shift to unique and themed characters where mm -hmm. you're like, you're not afraid to run your three copies of like Tywin anymore, your, your three copies of this or that unique, that it kind of started with the rush decks, right? You needed these characters out first turn to really make an impact. And now that you can recur them, get them back, Baratheon's been doing a lot of this recently, and now this prayer. Is Cersei three strength? Yeah. It's nice. It's just like, yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> but like, you can afford the risk of the unique dying now. Yeah. Well, every, it's like, okay, go ahead and Mallory. Every yeah. single house has a multitude of decks where there's that linchpin character. That if it dies, it's just, man, this is going to be twice as hard now. But with a card like this, you're willing to, like you said, run the risk. Now Farwind can stay in play for the entire <laughs> game. No, they're just going to discard him, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not for Targ. So. No, it's not. Womp. See you. Tim, you have any thoughts on that video? Just I mean, ally with no. Lannister. It's, it's what it is. Yeah. It, it makes I mean, you can get let your own more right? consistent decks. Hmm? Oh, I'm back. sorry, we didn't say what. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> it's good. It's good news. All right, let's finish it up with "Nurtured by the Crone." Uh, <laughs> it's a prayer that any house can run except for Martell. It cannot be canceled. That's a good thing. To <clears throat> the influence or a holy character to cancel a triggered effect that chooses a unique character or location as its only target. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, this is, I, you know, I immediately go to like Die by the Swords and, and Terminal Schemes and, and weird stuff like that. It's probably going to be choosing unique characters. Um, unique locations, like it can even cancel, uh, what, City Besieged? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it can cancel Dagger Lake. I, I was thinking it's, it's like the preventative version of Judged by the Father. Yeah. It's like, oh, I, let's leave my play and yeah. instead bring him back. Now, again, it's one of those things where it's like, are you really gonna run this in a deck? Like, it's gotta be two influencer or holy character, and then they have to choose the unique. Why don't you just run like I think if you, have, if you have a unique character that you really want to stick around, I don't know, Barrack, you don't want to do Nightmares them. Any character that you just really want, it's it's just another safety net, but I don't know that it gets a slot. What if you built a prayer deck with a neutral house and you just run all of the prayers? Holy character. <laughs> it's great. All right, Tim, what's the next card? <laughs> and then all the refugees. Fine, fine. Uh, the next card is Desperate Measures. It is a small council event. It has an any face action. You kneel one influence to search the top five cards of your deck, reveal one of those cards and add it to your hand, then discard the other searched cards. No. No. This is this our yeah, I have Yeah, I have a head tilt on this one. I... The fact that the small council does a lot. Yeah, there, well, there's a there's a there's a niche for the small council traded event. Don't get me wrong, but what you're doing and then doing to get uh, your choice of one card out of five, I don't think it's worth well, it. Well, hear me out. Such a good draw, though. There are yeah. some houses that don't mind cards being in the discard pile. Boom. True. Example: Baratheon, True. Mel Schemes. Oh, I'll play any of these guys from my discard pile if I want. What about Targaryen with Ambush from the Plains? Like, ah, uh, I'll pick this card, and then here's the discarded stuff. We'll do what I want with it. So it's a super interesting interaction. Um, I think there are, there are decks that can use this. And, it, like, it's a, it's another one that will get you the tools that you need. Like, tools. you need this. You have two pieces. You need them together, like Val and Laughing Storm. I mean, hey, I, that might work in the Speaking burn deck. When I need storm. Hatchlings <laughs> Feast. Speaking of Laughing Storm. Is that character only? How does that read? Oh, yeah, you wouldn't have to you discard. You wouldn't have to discard, right? Or is that from the deck? That's not. That's from your hand. Ah, uh, no, yeah. How is it? Get any of the five cards? Start. Is that what it says? Yep. Yeah, you search the top five Dude, and you take one. I'm telling you, it's rough in the north. If I really need the Hashlings feast, yeah. Whoop. Yeah. Let's go do this. If it's you're looking, if, if you're looking for a card, that's a card for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of one of those much and more type cards that slips under the radar, and then you're like, wait, this is really a pretty efficient way to find. Except you something. don't have to give your opponent crap. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, let's uh, let's finish this out with one more. How do you say that? Arain? Uh, Arain? Uh, Arain yeah. Waters. A unique, neutral, three-cost character. Two strength, intrigue, and power icon with naval enhancement on both. Important. His trait is Master of Ships. Wow. I'm glad he went into the uh, naval profession with that last name. Master of Ships. <laughs> it's, it worked out for him. Yeah, it really worked um, out. All right. If you have more than one opponent, and he would be killed or discarded from play instead, it is added, as a, added to the title pool. 
As a title, a Rainwaters gains once per round. Name a challenge icon until the end of the phase. Unique characters you control gain naval enhancement on that icon, if able. He's if a melee able. card. But he's, he's a melee card that you don't get any benefit from unless you choose him as a title in subsequent choosings. And, and have one initiative to choose. Is, choose well, no, no, here's, here's the know. thing. Think about this for a second. There's, there's a couple interesting pieces to this, <laughs> Hit this pie. One, <laughs> if you're playing in a melee and you're running black sails, the odds of someone else running black sails are probably not heavy. So this is kind of a useless title for anyone else but you. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, they're picking this title instead of a real title to not give you this title, which who's really going to do that? And if they do, it leaves a good title on the board for you to get every turn. I don't know. Or they're giving you that title and you're like, that's not that game changing at all for me. <laughs> Would I rather have two goals? Just throw it out there. I, it's like a melee, a real melee is going to last at most three turns. So for that to ever really happen, like you got to pay your three gold for him, hopefully use him fairly well. He's going to die. Then he's going to go to the title pool. The next turn, maybe you can grab him. It's just one of those things. It's like, come on. Yeah. Like If he died in a melee and he attached to your house and gave you that benefit forever, it's like, okay. But maybe. Let's, let's not forget. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not forgetting. <laughs> three costs for two strength with two icons and two naval enhancements. Neutral. And the navels arguably where they matter, uh, especially the intrigue. I think that's... I think that this everything on this text here is just a, a distraction. <laughs> <laughs> From a moderately good neutral card. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, Black Sails is weird. I, I played my first game using Black Sails last night, and it's good. Naval yeah. Enhancement is good good stuff. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. Yeah, I think that's where a lot of it comes from, is just like not valuing the Naval Enhancement high enough on mm-hmm. my end. Like I just haven't played Black Sails enough to know. So anyone have any final thoughts on everything here? I think that Paradigm... I mean, I feel it's like gonna work. as I was just kind of going through these and thinking about it, it's like this is a pack that I feel like a lot of the cards were just a little bit away from being exceptionally good cards. And that's not a bad thing. Like, there's some builders in here. There's some foundation laying cards and some things you throw in. But, like, aside from, like, the, the Lannister dude that gets you two gold, I, I, there's not a lot that I'm thinking, man, this is going to change. I'm going to see this card tomorrow <laughs> from all my opponents, mm-hmm. you know. I think the, the the smuggler that gives all the smuggler stealth Excellent. is super playable. Mm-hmm. I think that the blood ritual magic, yeah. obscenely <laughs> good. Broken. Um, even the target card that any phase puts a card in shadows, I think, is in my opinion worth looking at. Um, the dagger galley, I think, is going to be black sails. You just have. To, I think you have to run that <laughs> location. You're just a black sails. Um, so I mean, out of twenty cards, there's there's at least five five, to, ones, five yeah. to six that are just like that's going to get used. And the rest are uh, at least interesting. They're lurkers, yeah. They're, the prayers so far have been a bit disappointing, I think, ultimately. Uh, I got beat by some of those prayers. <laughs> yeah, I, I, the, one, the one get a three back is good. Yeah, just, that is a bummer, just by, by the, the way. Father is yeah. awesome. It's like, oh, I just killed Cersei, and they're like, and yeah. here she comes again. Yeah. Screw and that. it's like whenever they want to, like, back in the challenges phase. So, great pack. Yeah, so good stuff. Uh, more good Game of Thrones business, as there always is in these new chapter packs. Um, if you want to grab this one, Captain's Command, uh, we do have it on the web store, teamcomedy.com slash store. <coughs> or you can come by Tulsa, Oklahoma and buy it and see us. Or you can be a subscriber. Or, of yes. course, be a subscriber and it'll be sent to you. And if you are a subscriber, it's already been sent to you. So I hope you're enjoying the pack. <laughs> um, that's about it for us with Game of Thrones. And you guys have anything to add? Is that it? I'm waiting for the next one already. Yeah. Yeah, round out this cycle. I'm ready to do some blood magic. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks, guys, for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Peace.